Hey everyone, it's Active Learning here. Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are going to discuss about the CIDR metric. So, what is the CIDR metric? The CIDR metric stands for Consensus Based Image Description Evaluation Metric, and it is an automatic metric used to evaluate the quality of machine generated captions. It measures the similarity between a generated caption and a set of reference captions. So it is basically one of the best metrics for image captioning. And by measuring the similarity, um, grammar, saliency, and accuracy are both taken are all taken into account. And so what do I mean by automatic metric? Um, an automatic metric is a metric that doesn't require uh, human evaluation. So for example, if you need a human to decide how similar is the machine generated caption to the human written caption, then that wouldn't be an automatic metric. However, if you were to use some sort of algorithm to calculate how similar they are, then that is an automatic metric. Okay, so you might be wondering, how are they collecting the human captions, right? So for each image description, there are few human reference sentences, right? How are they collected? Well, they're collected through um, Amazon Mechanical Turk, which is a service for um, people where they can um, uh, allow other people to um, fill in certain tasks and they will pay them. Yeah. So let's first talk about how CIDR metric different from other valuation metrics, right? So first and most importantly is that it is consensus based. CIDR is designed to capture the consensus view of the reference text, which means that it gives higher scores to generated captions that are similar to multiple reference captions rather than just one, right? So many other metrics like blue um, does not actually account for consensus view. Uh, Blue only compares the current reference, a current candidate to another reference sentence, right? It doesn't consider the uh, consensus view. And second is that it applies weighting to engrams depending on their importance, right? And I, I quickly explain what engrams are in case you are not familiar. So an engram uh, is just n is just a constant it could be one two whatever right and um for example one gram also called unigram is each individual word and two gram also known as bigram is two words right and there's also trigrams and so on right okay so uh, let's talk about the steps right so the first steps used to calculate the metric is stemming and what stemming is is that um for example these words they all get reduced to fish right because they all um, pretty much mean the same thing uh, but depending on the context stemming could be bad right and stemming is applied to both the candidate and reference sentences and candidate sentence is just the machine generated caption and the reference sentence is the human written caption for the specific image that we're evaluating. And the second step is that we represent each sentence using the set of engrams present in it. So an engram uh, omega is a set of one or more ordered words. In the paper, they used engrams containing one to four words and the reason behind it is that one to four work the best. Okay, so um, this is an example of what it looks like if you apply engrams from one to four words. Note that I didn't apply stemming for this, so that's why there are words like walk instead of just walk, right? Okay, and the third step, I divided this into two parts because it's kind of long. All right, so the first part of the third step is that 
you know, intuitively, we're trying to compute the overlap between n-gram sets of candidate sentence and the reference sentence, right? This makes sense because the more overlaps between the machine-generated caption and the human caption, the better the machine caption is, right? Okay, so now how are we able to measure the similarity while giving a weight to how important the n-gram is, right? So the idea behind this is that the more common an n-gram is, the less weight it is given, right? So think about it this way. Uh, words like the, uh, he, she, they appear all over the place, right? They're almost in every single uh, image reference, right? And they typically give like very little information, right? So like what does the word the give you, right? It gives you pretty much nothing of value. And so those words are considered less informative than a word that only appears a few times, like crocodile, right? A crocodile could change the entire course of his story or something like that. Right? So in order to encode this intuition, they calculated something called the TFIDF, also standing uh, also uh, stands for term frequency inverse document frequency, right? Um, and they did this for each n-gram. So the term frequency accounts for the importance of a word in a single sentence, while inverse document frequency accounts for how common a word is, right? So let's look at the formula they gave us on the paper. Um, this here is the term frequency, and this here is the inverse document frequency. So let's break this apart, right? So in cyan here, this fancy math um, symbol is essentially the number of times the n-gram appears in one reference sentence, right? How many times does this uh, n-gram appear? And in red here, this is the number of n-grams in one reference sentence. Like how many n-grams are there in total? For example, if I have a sentence of length, uh, let, let's just say I'm using this sentence right here. Uh, if I'm counting unigrams, it will be the length of this sentence, right? So that's essentially what it is in red here. And in the orange part, in the numerator, we have the number of images, right? The total number of images in, uh, yeah. And in the denominator, we have um, this crazy math looking thing, right? So let's break this apart. So... What this part is essentially saying is that if an engram has ever showed up in any reference sentence for an image, then it is one, otherwise it is zero, right? Because think about it, it's taking the min of one or zero. So it could either be one or zero. And then this means that we're taking the sum of all of this, right? So intuitively, uh, right, so if the denominator is equal to the number of images, right, so if it appears in every single image, right, uh, it means the word is pretty common, it's in every single image, and if it's equal to the number of images, right, then uh, this will be equal to 1, and taking the log of 1 is 0, and 0 times whatever the term frequency is, it's still 0. So we end up getting that the weight for this is zero as well. So that's how we know that this word is meaningless or worthless in some sense. And we finally calculate the cider score. And we first calculate the cider n score depending on the length of the n-gram. Um, and to do that, we calculate the cosine similarity. And note here that the range is from 0 to 1. Uh, you, you might be confused because it's in the cosine function range between negative 1 and 1. Well, we apply normalization so that it is between 0 to 1 because in order to measure how similar uh, captions are, it makes more sense that they're positive, right? And... The cosine similarity between uh, the candidate and reference sentences account for both precision and recall, which is very good because 
Uh, most other metrics only account for one of them rather than all of them, right? For example, um, blue only accounts for precision and it lacks recall. Although they try to account for, uh, try to make up for the recall, it, it's still lacking in recall, right? And cosine similarity basically accounts for both, which is very good. All right, so now let's break this equation down, right? So this part is essentially the candidate, right? At least I think it is. Yeah, so it doesn't matter what this is, but it's essentially the TFIDF waiting back there for candidate and reference, right? And, you know, remember that we applied the same steps for all candidate and reference sentences in the previous three steps. So this is where we're taking the cosine similarity and then we're summing them up and then we are taking the average, the average cosine similarity between them. And that is essentially the cider n score, right? And note that the TFIDF weighting vectors correspond to all n grams of length n. So if you have a unigram, you only have TFIDF weighting vectors corresponding to unigrams, right? Okay, so then we end up taking the sum of this and we apply weighting. Uh, they decided that one over n is the best weighting. Um, and for n, they decided that four worked the best. And remem remember, right, uh, so we, we talked about this where they only took um, n grams from one to four, right? So this is what it is. And they're essentially taking the sum of all cider n from, you know, cider one to cider two to cider three to cider four. They sum them all up, apply the weighting, which is one over four in this case, if n is equal to four, right? Okay, yeah, so that's it. Um, that's the CIDR score for you. In future videos, I will do more videos on metrics like blue score, meteor score, the Raj family. I will do videos on all of those. I've been really interested in image captioning, so that's why I'm making these videos. But yeah, if you guys found this video helpful, please leave a like and subscribe. And if you're still confused on anything within this video, please ask in the comments below. I will try to respond as soon as possible. All right. So thank you guys for watching and see you next time.